Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about planet Earth and earthquakes. And we're going to address a very interesting theory that proposes that maybe the Sun is actually responsible for some of the earthquakes on our planet. So let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. One of the challenges that science faces today is trying to predict natural disasters and essentially try to avoid all of the destruction that could be caused by a typical powerful earthquake. Quite a lot of earthquakes happen around the planet, and here are just some of them in the last hundred years or so, and although most of them are pretty small and usually we don't even feel them, some of them can be extremely destructive. And every year, scientists usually expect at least 17 major earthquakes, these are usually 7 to 7.9 on Richter scale, and on this map you see them as little orange circles, and then we expect at least one great earthquake at least once a year as well, that's usually over 8, represented by the red circles on the map. Now a much better representation of this, that was made by this wonderful person and the code for which you can find in the description below, is this amazing 3D representation of earthquakes on the planet that even shows you to some extent the depth where earthquakes occurred. Now this is actually a slightly exaggerated depth, so in reality it wasn't that deep, but this really shows you how many earthquakes occur on our planet in just one year. This is between July 2017 and July 2018. The larger circles are obviously more powerful earthquakes, you get to see even the small ones here. So this is actually a pretty incredible simulation that you can also find right here in the description below. But back in the 60s there were actually a couple of really really major earthquakes. One was in Alaska in 1964 and one was in Chile in 1960, both of which were extremely powerful and very devastating. And so the scientists tried to find a way to possibly predict earthquakes or at least estimate if there is any correlation between, for example, solar activity and the number of earthquakes on the planet. And this theory is actually not new. It was originally proposed by Rudolf Wolf back in 19th century. He was a Swiss astronomer and he believed that the sun could potentially cause earthquakes on the planet. And more specifically, the scientists behind this idea believe that the sunspots are responsible for the increase in activity on the planet. And this idea is further reinforced by various observations of, for example, lightning or the so-called earthquake lights and other types of powerful electromagnetic activity that has often been associated with earthquakes occurring on the planet. And although some earthquakes, like the one in Chile in 1960, did actually correspond to the highest magnetic activity on the sun, the one in Alaska in 1964 was actually during very low solar activity. So there is definitely a bit of a discrepancy there. But in the last 20 years, we've also increased our ability to watch the sun and also obviously detect various solar activity, while at the same time, we've also increased our ability to detect even minute earthquakes and thus should have a lot more data now to see if earthquakes indeed are correlated or potentially caused by the solar interaction. Today, when it comes to detecting earthquakes, there are over 8,000 different seismic detectors on the planet and they're able to sense even minute vibrations in the planet. While at the same time programs like SOHO that have been running for many many years now observe the sun so accurately that we also have a lot of data from the sun. In other words, we definitely have enough data both from the sun and from the planet to determine whether the solar flares and solar activity is responsible for the earthquakes. And the first major paper came out back in 2013 and looked at the solar flares and the distribution of earthquakes on the planet. Right here you see a graph that shows you the number of solar flares and also sunspots and as you can see they're kind of correlated. In other words, the more sunspots we see on the sun, the more solar flare activity we detect on the planet. Which of course makes sense because solar flares are essentially responsible for creating a lot of these so-called coronal mass ejections that you see right here that are responsible for some of the most powerful magnetic storms. And these phenomena known as coronal mass ejections are produced in a very interesting and a somewhat peculiar way. Also, in terms of size and energy, they are actually ridiculously powerful. They're even bigger than planet Earth. The production happens because of this. The magnetic lines, as you can see right here, eventually when they reach a certain entanglement level, snap and release a tremendous amount of energy. This snapping then results in a very large amount of mass being released from the sun 
and hurled toward planet Earth and of course other planets. And although it doesn't always go toward planet Earth, sometimes it does hit our planet and ends up producing a lot of electromagnetic effects. But when the sunspot and solar flare data was combined with the average distribution of earthquakes, it sort of looked like this. And what this shows us is that there doesn't seem to be any correlation between typical earthquakes and solar flares. Even though the correlation for solar flares and sunspots was there, the earthquakes are more or less equally distributed across the planet and also across time. So back in 2013, this was enough conclusion for us to determine that earthquakes do not seem to correlate with solar flares. But after this paper came out, some scientists started to actually realize that large earthquakes, the more massive ones, the ones that we actually do care about, don't seem to have a random pattern. They do seem to occur more or less around the same region and also around the same time. In other words, they weren't really equally distributed. They seem to have a correlation of some sort. And some scientists wanted to investigate if this correlation was once again connected to the solar flares somehow. And so the recent paper that was released in Nature magazine deals with this and does seem to discover a pattern after all. For this paper, once again, they used the SOHO telescope's um, observational data of our sun, and they combined this with approximately two decades worth of earthquake data. And in the process of this, they discovered that there does seem to be a correlation between strong earthquakes and the number of incoming solar protons. The so-called proton density that they used in this paper is the measurement of the solar flare activity on the sun. But none of this happened right away. There was a bit of a delay, approximately 24 hour delay for most of the earthquakes. In other words, what they discovered is that approximately 24 hours after a major solar flare, there was a major increase in earthquakes above magnitude 5.6, with the most major earthquakes of over 8 in magnitude increasing even more dramatically. And this is unlikely to happen completely by chance. According to them, the chance of this is only like 1 in 100,000. Suggesting, of course, that there does seem to be some sort of a correlation between major earthquakes and solar activity. But obviously we don't really know what's going on and how it's happening. But one potential explanation here is kind of similar to, well, how you're listening to this video right now. It's the effect known as piezoelectric effect. And it's how the speakers in your phone or your computer right now are producing sound. By applying electricity to a certain element, we can actually create vibrations in that element. And vice versa, certain crystals, if you apply pressure to them, can also produce electricity. But in this case, if this is what's happening, then the highly charged particles coming from the sun may actually act on Earth as if it was a speaker and make it vibrate. And these vibrations obviously can then cause massive earthquakes. That's one potential explanation. Since we know Earth contains a lot of earth quartz on the inside, and quartz is definitely very highly affected by the uh, piezoelectric effect, this would actually make some sense. It would make sense that electricity coming from space would make it sort of vibrate and destabilize the system around it. But right now this is sort of theoretical and doesn't actually have any physical proof. So we definitely need a lot more investigation and different types of theories to try to explain if the observations of massive earthquakes and solar activity are indeed in some way caused by the electrical effects displacing the quartz inside the planet. And if so, we might actually even find a way to control this later on if we can produce a large enough magnetosphere, artificial magnetosphere, around our own planet. But for now, that's kind of all we know. It's a very recent study and I'm sure there will be a lot of follow-up because it's a pretty exciting discovery, but it's also a very important discovery. It might potentially one day lead to us being able to control powerful earthquakes. But until we discover more, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find it in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye-bye.